Shalom, shalom, uh, Barak Yahuwah. Shalom, shalom to the 12 tribes of Yashara. Shalom, shalom to the dispersion. Shalom, shalom to the older brother, the stick of Yahuda. And shalom, shalom to the younger brother, the stick of Ephraim. And shalom, shalom to the strangers and the sojourners who sojourn amongst us, whom are no longer uh, of the nations of the Gentiles, but because of the offering of Yahushua HaMashiach, the shed blood of Yahushua HaMashiach, they have been brought into covenant and are no longer of the nations of the Gentiles, but are now considered as native born because truly, truly it is written that there is one Torah, both for the stranger, both for the native born and the stranger who sojourns in your midst. There is one Torah, there is one belief, there is one Ruach, one immersion, one master of us all. All right, favor and shalom to you all this day, beloved ones, beloved family, to whomever is here um, listening to this video this day. <clears throat> Rock Yahuwah. Um, just wanting to come by yet again, yet again with another study, just to help. Um, like as always, I'm like I've been saying, just to help build up, just to help build up in any type of way I can help. Um, extending a hand of servitude to anybody who who wants to grow in the walk and grow in, in their walks with Yahuwah. Uh, these videos are an act of servitude, an act of a ministry, if you can, if you will, because this ministry just means servant, just to serve. I'm that's all I am. I'm just a servant. I'm just a servant. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not here trying to uh, build a name of any type of ministry. I'm not here to build the name of any organization. All I want to do is to help in any type of way that I can in my the capacity that Yahuwah has put into me to help build his body. To anybody, you know, I'm just here to help serve, to help build up in any way that I can encourage if y'all want to reach out, please reach out any type of way. I, we, me or the other beloved, other beloved brothers can help serve you and help you, encourage you, whatever way we can, point you toward the right direction and just help build you up. You know, that's what we're here. That's what these videos are for. I'm not trying to build a name brand. I'm not trying to build up the name of any organization any quote-unquote ministry i'm not trying to build up the name anyone's el any name besides the name of yahuwah I, all i want to do is help build up the reign of Elohim with whatever capacity and, and 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 tools that yahuwah has given me to us all because we all have a calling to help build up and we're all called to help and serve each other and to fulfill the sovereign law and that is to Love your neighbor as yourself. And so anybody who who is walking in covenant with Yahuwah, who is guarding the commandments of Yahuwah, guarding the Torah and Ruach and in truth, you are my brother, you are my sister, you are my neighbor, and I am commanded to love you as myself. And any way I can, anything that me or the brothers, any of us, we can do to help you, please reach out. Or if, if you're feeling glad, reach out We can so we can help you whatever way we can. All right? Rock your whole. <clears throat> today's study, today's lesson, beloved ones, we are going to be um, going over um, the lesson and study. Well, I guess you can title it, We Must Be Born Again. We must be born again. All right? We must be born again. Born of what? Born again of what? We must be born of Ruach, of spirit. <laughs> you know. One thing, like, one thing that I've noticed within the house of Yahshua is, yes, we, a lot of people, we pre, a lot of people preach the commandments. They preach the Torah, and that's good that the truth of the Father goes forth, but you know there's not a big there's not a big what i have noticed is there's not a, a lot of people preaching the importance of 
why we must be born again. Why we must be born again. There's not a lot of people that's really not. In this season, people are coming up with their own doctrines and understandings of just a bunch of random stuff, you know, adding a bunch of knowledge, just trying to make stuff more deep, the good news more deep than it needs to be. When the simple truth is we must be born again. We must be born again, you know. The Christians say it all the time, you know, we must be born again. We must be born again. In, and, uh, you know, being born again of the Spirit. But, you know, they fail to understand that the only way to Mashiach, who is the Ruach, is through Torah. Is through Torah. But, you know, I, I, on the flip side, you know, people who preach the Torah, you know, they preach the Torah, but they only preach the letter. They preach the letter, and they only, um, they don't put an emphasis and an importance on why we must be born again. And that's what we're going to be studying here today. We must be born again. We must be born again. All right? Not of flesh and blood, nor of the desire of man, but of Elohim. We must be born from above. All right, let us read the words of the Mashiach in John chapter 3. And we're going to read verses 1 through 6. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, starting at verse 1. And there was a man of the Pharisees, Nachdemon, commonly known as Nicodemus, was his name, a ruler of the Yahudim. This one came to Yahushua by night and said to him, said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from Elohim, for no one is able to do these signs you do if Elohim is not with him. Yahushua answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born from above, he is unable to see the reign of Elohim. Unless one is born from above, he is unable to see the reign of Elohim. Nachtaman said to him, How is a man able to be born again? To be born when he is old. Is he able to enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born? Yahusha answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he is unable to enter the reign of Elohim. That which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which has been born of Ruach, of the Spirit, is Spirit. That which has born, been born of the Ruach is Ruach. All right. In the word Yahusha, our master, our Messiah, declare from his mouth, we must be born again. We must be born again of the Ruach. We must be born again of the Spirit. And look who he was talking to. He was talking to Nachtaman. Nachtaman Nicodemus, who was a ruler and a teacher of the people. But even he could not understand the words of the Mashiach and when he said we must be born again. We must be born again. You see, many in this season are coming, proclaiming genealogy, proclaiming, you know, that we are the true people. And indeed, y'all more than likely are. Y'all are more than likely Afraim, Yahuda, that has been scattered across the four corners of this earth. You know, we get in this truth, and it's a beautiful thing that his people are coming back to covenant. I'm not belittling the fact that if you are of the true seed, that it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing that if you are the seed that you're coming back into obedience to the covenant. But many cannot look past the flesh. Many cannot look past this flesh. And they begin to allow the flesh to be puffed up in their pride and arrogance when they learn of these new truths. Not understanding that we must all be born again. It matters not who you are, whether you're of the native born of Yahuda or Ephraim, of the true seed of Yasharal, of Yaakov, of the physical seed of Yasharal, or if you're the strangers. It matters not whether it, it matters not. Why? Because no flesh will inherit the reign of Elohim. No flesh will inherit the reign of Elohim. Only those born of Ruach. And again, it's a beautiful thing 
that Yahuda and Ephraim are coming back into covenant in these last days. But in the words of Yahusha speaking to Nakdaman, who was a Yahudim in flesh, he declared, unless one is born of born born again, he is unable to see the reign of Elohim. All right. So at the end of it, whether you're of the circumcision or of the, the uncircumcision, it matters not unless you are born of Ruach because neither have any strength. The flesh is weak, but only those who are born in Ru of Ruach can truly walk in the will and the desire of Yahuwah. And so we must, we must, we must proclaim the immersion, the baptism of the Ruach HaKadush, the immersion of the Ruach HaKadush, the set apart spirit. We must proclaim because in the words of Yahuqanan, he says, truly, truly I immerse you in water unto repentance. But he that comes at who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandal straps I am unworthy to bear, to uh, to uh, to untie. For he shall immerse you in the ruach and in fire. He shall immerse you in the spirit, the kadush ruach, and in fire. All right. Well, uh, uh, we proclaim repentance. We proclaim immersion in water, but we proclaim the the immersion of the ruach. We proclaim the immersion of the Ruach because in the words of Yahushua, unless you are born again, you shall by no means inherit the reign of Elohim. You shall by no means inherit the reign of Elohim. Well, why was Yahushua declaring we must be born again? You know, we're born once into this, into this life, but we must all be born again in this life too. Born again. Born again, meaning being born a second time, being born of the Ruach, all right? Because when we're all born in this life, we're born of flesh. That which is, bo that which is uh, 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 born of flesh is of the flesh, but that which has been born of the Ruach is Ruach, all right? The reason we must be born again, because this goes all the way back to the fall of man, all right? In the beginning, Yahuwah gave a step, created man, man and woman, he created them, all right? When he created Adam and Kua, he established an eternal covenant with them. He established an eternal covenant with them. He gave them com the command of every tree of the garden you can partake of, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, do not eat, do not eat of it. We know the story. Uh, Hashatan came tempted Kua, who then who then caused Adam to sin. So pretty much Hashatan caused them both to transgress the command and they transgressed. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. In the very command that Yahuwah gave them, he said, in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. The wages of sin is, the wages of sin is death. They sinned. They transgressed the instruction. And what happened? Uh, death entered into this life. Death entered into this life. Uh, Yahuwah then proceeded to pronounce judgment over them. He pronounced judgment over the serpent, the woman, and man. All right, in Genesis 3, we're not going to read it. If you want to go, read Genesis 3. Read Genesis 3, it's about the fall of man. He pronounced judgment over them. All right, as he pronounced, when he pronounced judgment over them, he pronounced death over all flesh over our flesh. When Adam sinned, Adam was uh, condemned to the flesh. We were taken from our original uh, original uh, state and we were condemned to the flesh. All right, if you read the forgotten books of Adam and Kua, the books of Eden, um, it goes more into detail that before the fall, they were like the messengers of heaven, the messengers of heaven, and then the very esteem of Yahuwah rested upon them. But after the fall, their flesh was altered to, the, to similar to that of animals. Now, coincidentally, throughout the generation, he commanded them throughout the generations to sacrifice animals for the remission of sin, for the covering of sin. Okay? But because he sinned and was condemned to the flesh, all flesh must die. He said, in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. You shall surely die. You, Adam. You mankind, 
you are flesh you must die the flesh is dead on account of sin and it must die the wages of sin is death sin who is hashatan uh, uh rules over the flesh why because adam sold us over in the words of shaul that i am fleshly sold under sin so to who so to hashatan so to sin so hashatan who is sin rules the flesh he rules over the flesh. The flesh is his. That's why he tempts the flesh. He is the tempter and the master of the flesh. He is Pharaoh. The flesh is Egypt. All right. And because of the fall, the flesh must die. He pronounced judgment and death over this flesh. We must die to this flesh. We must die. The wages of sin is death. All right. All of us from the time of Adam, we, we were born under this curse of sin and death. In the words of, of Dawood, he says, uh, he says that uh, in sin, I was conceived. And how does, how does the song go? It says, um, man, how does it go? Um, I was brought forth in sin and it, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin, my mother conceived me. All right. We were all born and shaped into iniquity. We were all born and shaped under the curses of sin and death. The flesh must die. The flesh must die. All right. But how is the flesh? How are we born again? How is this flesh put to death? You guessed it. Via the Ruach. Via Yahusha Hamashiach. Yahusha Hamashiach. This is the good news. That because of Yahusha, we have now been given the power to be born again. And we're going to go more into that. All right. And then we're going to go more into that. All right. The flesh in this world and this age is temporary and has been condemned to judgment. And unless we are born of the world to come, we will indeed perish with this world. So we must be born again and separate ourselves from the dead. From this dead flesh we must separate ourselves from this world from this temporary age and we must be born of the ages to come we must be born of the new jerusalem from above the renewed jerusalem all right those who are born of the ruach we are, are, are children of the free woman and we have been set free from 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 the slave woman from the flesh we are no longer children of the slave woman, which is the flesh. But we are children of the free woman, that of Ruach, that of Ruach. Okay? We must be born again. We must be born again. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, 14 through 19. Romans chapter 5, verses 14 through 19. Starting at verse 14. But death reigned from Adam until Masha. Even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who was a type of him, who is a type of him who was to come. But the favorable gift is not like the trespass, for if by the one for if by the one man's trespass many died. Who was that one man? Adam. Much more the favor of Allahim and the gift in favor of the one man, Yahusha Messiah, will overflow to many. The favor, the favor that came in through Yahusha HaMashiach. The favorable gift is not as by one having sinned. For indeed, the judgment was one to condemnation through the first Adam. But the favorable gift is of many trespasses on to righteousness. Righteousness in Yahusha HaMashiach. For by the trespass of the one, death reigned, death did reign through the one. And much more those who receive the overflowing favor and gift of the righteousness shall reign in life through the one Yahushua Mashiach. So then, as through one trespass, there resulted condemnation to all men, to which trespass the trespass of the first Adam. So also, through one righteous act, there resulted righteous declaring of life to all men. Through one righteous act. What righteous act? The offering of Yahusha HaMashiach. The shed blood of Yahusha HaMashiach. And because of his righteous act, 
resulted in being declared righteous of life. The righteous declaring of life to all men. Being declared righteous. The righteous shall live by belief. By belief in what? By belief in the offering of Yahusha. The righteous act of Yahusha HaMashiach. This has been given to all men who will believe. For as through the disobedience of one man, many were made sinners because of the disobedience of our father Adam. Many were made sinners. The wages of sin is death. Death and condemnation entered in through the first Adam because of his disobedience. So also through the obedience of the one, many shall be declared righteous. Because Yahushua came in the likeness of sinful flesh, yet condemned, did not get, he was tempted in every way, but did not, but did never committed sin once. He was obedient unto death, death even of a state. And he was therefore highly exalted and given the name that is above every name. And because of his obedience, because of his righteousness, we now have the power to become the righteousness of Elohim. We now have the power to become sons of Elohim. We now through Yahushua now have the authority to become firstborn sons of Elohim because of his righteousness. Because of his love and commitment. Because he came as the first, he came as the second Adam. But where Adam failed, he overcame. He came as the second Adam. He came to offer himself up in the place of his son Adam. So as to satisfy the righteous requirement of death over the flesh. But also because of his righteousness and through his resurrection, the revert the curse. Of sin and death is being reversed. It has been reversed because of the righteousness of Yahushua HaMashiach and because of the resurrection of Mashiach. We now have the power to become sons of Elohim. All right. We now have the power to become the sons of Elohim. This is why we must be born again of the Ruach, the Ruach of Yahushua HaMashiach, the same Ruach that raised him from the dead. He will give life to our mortal bodies. All right, thus satisfying the penalty of death that is required. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> that is required for the the righteous requirement of death over the flesh that must be paid. When the Ruach comes upon us, that penalty of death is paid in us. And we are made alive in the Ruach through the resurrection of Mashiach. And the curse of sin and death is being reversed in us. Because Yahushua came to reverse the curse of sin and death that we brought upon ourselves, through our, that was brought upon us through the sin of our father Adam. He had to come as the second Adam. But where Adam failed, he overcame. And so now through him, we now have the power to be declared righteous and to, be, uh, 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 to receive the favor of life through Yahushua HaMashiach. This is why we must be born again. Because the wages of sin is death and we must die. We must die. And so this is paid in us when the Ruach comes upon us and we are born again. We die to this flesh. We die and we are made alive in the Ruach through Yahushua HaMashiach. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, the next chapter, and we're going to read just verses 3 through 6. Romans chapter 6. Verses 3 through 6, starting at verse 3. Or do you not know that many of us were immersed into Yahushua Messiah, were immersed into his death? All right. As many of us were immersed into Messiah Yahusha, were immersed into his death. You see now this chapter, these verses right here are, uh, are chap verses used for, we are good verses to be used for the physical immersion. We know that when we, the physical immersion, when we go into that water, it is symbolic of the death, the burial. And when we come out, it is symbolic of the resurrection. All right. It is symbolic of the resurrection. But we understand that the, what's it called? That the physical water immersion is merely symbolic and a shadow of the greater immersion that we must all receive. Because truly John immersed in water unto repentance, but one comes mightier than he who shall immerse us in the Ruach and fire. The Ruach, the immersion of the Ruach. 
So this this applies to the immersion of the Ruach more than anything, all right? So as many of us were immersed into Mashiach, we were immersed into his death, all right? As he was put to death, we too die with him. We partake of his death. We are being conformed to his death. Verse four, we were therefore buried with him through immersion into death, that as Messiah was raised from the dead by the esteem of the Father, so also we should walk in the newness of life. So as Mashiach was put to death and buried, uh, buried, when the Ruach comes upon us, we are put to death. We are buried with Mashiach. We are going back to the ground. From the dust we have come into the dust, we shall return. We die with Mashiach. We die to this flesh. And as Mashiach was raised from the dead by the esteem of the Father, so also we shall walk in the newness of life. Indeed, we were dead in our trespasses. We were dead in the trespasses because of our sin, because of us walking to, according to the flesh and walking according to the prince of the power of the air, Hashatan, who rules over the sons of disobedience, who rules over the sons who are born of the flesh. We were dead in our trespasses. We have all fallen short of his esteem and we all were dead in our flesh. The flesh is dead. But the same Ruach that raised Yahushua we we'll also, uh, uh, we should also walk in that ruach in the newness of life through His resurrection. Verse five: For if we have come to be grown together in the likeness of His death, we shall also be of the resurrection, knowing this that our old man was impaled with Him, so that the body of sin might be rendered powerless to serve sin no longer. Again. When the Ruach comes upon us, when the immersion of the fire Ruach, the, the fire immersion of the Ruach HaKadosh comes upon us, the body of death is put impaled as Mashiach was impaled to the stake. We too are impaled to, we too are impaled and his flesh is put to death and it is rendered powerless. It is rendered powerless so that uh, it is so as to serve sin no longer. It is only through the Ruach that, that, that we can rule over the flesh. That we are put to death to this flesh. Satisfying the judgment. The satisfying the judgment that the all flesh must die. Because indeed in the words of Yahuwah he says. In the day you Adam. You man. You flesh. The day you eat of it. You shall surely die. And this when the Ruach comes upon us. This judgment of death is paid in us and we are put to death and impaled in the flesh and we die and we are raised to the newness of life through the resurrection of the Ruach. The same Ruach that raised Yahushua from the dead gives us life and raises us from the dead and we are made alive in the Ruach in the body of sin and death is rendered powerless to serve sin. Does it make sense? The judgment of death is paid in us and we are made alive in Mashiach and declare righteous by belief. We are declared righteous by belief via the Ruach, via Yahusha HaMashiach. Let us go to Romans chapter 8 and we're going to read verses 1 through 14. Romans chapter 8, 1 through 14, starting at verse 1. There is then now no condemnation, no sentencing of death. Condemnation is alluding to death. There is no sentencing to death. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Mashiach Yahusha. Who is Mashiach Yahusha? Yahusha is Ruach. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Mashiach, in the Ruach, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according, but according to the Ruach, according to the Spirit. For the Torah of the Spirit of life in Messiah Yahusha has set me free from the Torah of sin and death. For the Torah of the spirit of the life of Mashiach Yahushua has set me free from the Torah of sin and death. The Torah of sin and death that came in, the law of sin and death that came in through Adam and Kua, through the transgression of Adam and, of, in, of Adam and Kua. And again, when Mashiach came satisfied, when he came to suffer and die for us, he satisfied that death that was required 
the judgment of the Torah, the judgment of sin and death that came in through Adam and Kua. He paid it and satisfied the need for the death that was required for the sin of Adam and Kua. But because he was righteous, because he was righteous and obedient unto death, Yahuwah showed favor unto him and raised him from the dead and gave him life. And gave him life. This was him uh, overcoming the curses of sin and death. This was him reversing the curse of sin and death that came in through Adam and Kua. And so now all who are in Mashiach, Yahusha, born again of the Ruach, there is now no condemnation if you do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Because it is the, through the Torah of the life of the spirit of Mashiach, Yahusha, we have been set free from the law, the Torah of sin and death. For the Torah being powerless, and that it was weak through the flesh. Elohim has sent his own son in the likeness of flesh and sin. Of flesh of sin and concerning sin condemned sin in the flesh. The Torah being powerless uh, in that it was weak through the flesh. This is alluding to um, the covenant given at Sinai. All right, The covenant given at Sinai it was weak. Why? Because it was given in the flesh. All right, The flesh is weak. The flesh is unable to, to walk in Torah. All right? it, it was weak in that it was given in and through the flesh. The circumcision of the flesh was weak. It has no power. It has no strength. It is not. But the, what does matter is the guarding of the commands as a renewed creature, uh, born again of the Ruach. All right? The, the, the Torah, it was powerless because it was given uh, in the flesh via the circumcision of the flesh. Given at Sinai, all right. Having sent his own son in the likeness of flesh of sin and concerning sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Yahusha, he came in the likeness of the of likeness of flesh of sin, and but concerning sin, he condemned sin of flesh. He condemned sin in the flesh. He did not walk in the flesh. He condemned the sin of the flesh. He did not obey the flesh. So that, let me read for verse 4, so that the righteousness of the Torah should be completed in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. All right. So that the righteousness of the Torah, what is the righteousness of the Torah? Obedience. Obedience. That the righteousness of obedience. And by extension, the righteous requirement of sin, which is death. All right. Both of this is fulfilled and completed in us You're through Yahusha Mashiach. Okay. Um, Yahusha walked a whole life of obedience onto Yahuwah and became the perfect offering to be made for the remission of sin. For the remission of sin. He walked without spot or blemish and he was the only one. His blood was the only uh, blood that was deemed worthy for the remission of sin, for the for the salvation of mankind, because the blood of animals could not save us. And so Yahushua walked his whole life without spot or blemish and was deemed worthy to offer his life up as a ransom for many. And because he became obedient unto death, he became obedient unto death. He now gave us the power to now uh, become and be restored as sons and to become the righteous and of righteousness of Elohim and so that the righteousness of the Torah is completed in us. As we repent and come back into obedience, the righteousness, the righteous declaring, uh, being declared righteous is completed in us through Yahushua HaMashiach because our righteousness does not make us, us, our obedience does not make us our righteousness in and of itself does not make us righteous. There is none good, no, not one. Only Yahusha, who is Yahuwah, is good. Only Yahusha, who is Yahuwah, is good. Only he is righteous. And so when we walk in righteousness and obedience, his righteousness covers us because he was the only one that was declared righteous. And he was the only one whose blood was found worthy to be shed for the remission of sin. And so it's both the righteous declaring the righteousness of obedience. We must obey his Torah. It's completed in us through Yahushua HaMashiach when his righteousness covers us. And it's the righteous requirement of death 
that is the righteous requirement of sin, which is death, is paid in us through the offering of Yahushua. Because again, his blood was shed for the remission of sins. For the remission of sin. It's twofold. The righteousness of obedience, because righteousness is to obey Torah, and the righteous requirement of death, uh, 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 the righteous requirement of sin, which is death, uh, which is death, is paid in us. It's all paid in us. It's all completed in us through Yahushua HaMashiach, through his Ruach coming upon us. And we are reconciled and restored back into covenant with the Father. With the Father. Verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the matters of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the matters of the Spirit. We must be born again. For the mind of, fle of the flesh is death, but the mind of the Spirit is life and peace. We must die to the flesh. The flesh, the mind of the flesh, uh, 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 it, the sin rules over the flesh. And thus, if you walk according to the mind of the flesh, you are walking according to the sin, and the wages of sin is death. But the mind of the Spirit is life and peace. If we walk in the Ruach, we have life, and we have peace through Yahushua Mashiach. But the mind of the flesh is enmity towards Allah. It is his enemy. The mind, the mind of the flesh is enmity towards Allah. For it does not subject itself to the Torah of Allah. Neither indeed is it able. The flesh is unable to subject itself into obedience to the Torah. This is why the circumcision of the heart not the heart, my excuse me. The circumcision of the flesh was weak and it had no power because it was not able to give one the power to subject themselves into obedience to the Torah. This is why we must be born again. And we're going to touch on this because it's through the circumcision of the heart that we are given the power to subject ourselves into obedience. But if you are in the flesh, you have the mind of the flesh. And the mind of the flesh is enmity because it cannot subject itself to the Torah. And if you are not subjecting yourself to the Torah, you are his enemy. You are not in covenant with him. You are separated from favor. All right. And, and you are unable to sub, you are unable to subject yourself to the Torah because the flesh is unable. It is it is unable to subject itself to the Torah. Shaul says that the Torah is spiritual. The Torah is spiritual, but I am fleshly sold under sin. And so as long as you remain in the flesh, as long as you remain in the flesh and are not born of, of the Ruach, born again of the Spirit, you are walking in the mind of your flesh and where, where sin is. Uh, the mind of the flesh is sin. And where sin is, the wages of sin is death. You are his enemy. All right. This is why we must be born again so that the Torah can be. And we're going to touch on this, too, so that the Torah can be written upon our hearts and we can have the power to subject ourselves in obedience to the Torah. Verse eight. And those who are in the flesh are unable to please Allah. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Ruach, in the spirit. And if indeed the spirit of Allah dwells in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Messiah, this one is not his. All right. It matters not who you are. If you are of the true seed of Yahshua, if you are of the seed of Yahuda or Aphraim, it matters nothing if you are not born of from above. It says here, the book says, if one does not have the spirit of Messiah, this one is not his. You are not his. We must be born from his loins. As a, as a son is born as a physical, we having physical fathers, we are born from the seed of our father. We are born from the seed of our father. We, uh, If you have a physical father, he is your father because you came from his seed. And so likewise, the seed of the Ruach, it is through his seed, which is the Ruach, that we become the seed of Allahim. That we become sons of Allahim. Does it make sense? The same way a man, 
uh, a son is born via the seed of the father, we likewise, through the seed of our heavenly father, the Ruach, are born again of spirit and now we become the seed of our father. All right. And unless you are, unless you are born of his seed, he is not your father. The devil is your father. Again, remember, Yahuwah said that all flesh has been sold to Hashatam. And so all who walk as sons of disobedience in accordance with the flesh, read Rome, uh, Ephesians chapter 2. If you walk according to the flesh, then the prince of the power of the air, Hashatan, rules over you. He is your father. He is your father. All right. And, 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 and you belong to him. But this is why we must be born again, because we're set free from, from that. We are redeemed from our old master, Hashatan, and we now receive a new master, a new father, who is Yahuwah, via the spirit. All right. And when you become, when you receive the spirit, you are now his. You are now his. You are his son. You are his servant. You are now his bride. Barak Yahuwah. Uh, 10. And if Messiah is in you, the body is truly dead on account of sin, but the spirit is life on account of righteousness, on account of righteousness, on account of obedience. And if the spirit of him who raised Jehusha from the dead, he who raised Messiah from the dead shall give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit dwelling in you. So again, the flesh is dead. The flesh is enmity towards Elohim. We were all born and shaped into iniquity. We were all born into this flesh. But the same Ruach that raised Yahusha from the dead, that raised him from the dead, because of his righteousness and obedience, the same Ruach that raised him from the dead will also give life to us and raise us from the dead, from this wicked flesh, because this flesh is dead. The body without the spirit is dead. And so we are raised to life from the dead and he gives life to our mortal bodies through his spirit dwelling in us so then brothers we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh for if you live according to the flesh you are going to die why because a judgment a sentencing of death has been pronounced over this flesh and unless we separate ourselves from it and are born again we are going to die too we are going to die but if by the spirit you are put to, but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. The way we put to death, to, the way that the deeds of the body, which is sin, is put to death, is via the ruach. Us walking in the spirit. When we walk in the spirit, the fat, the fat, the livers and the kidney is consumed in us. All the toxins, the sin, the sins, the deeds of the body are put to death in us when we walk in the Ruach, when we walk in the fire immersion of the Ruach HaKadosh, when the Ruach comes upon us, we walk in the spirit. We put to death the deeds of the body. We shall live. We shall live. For as many are led by the spirit of Elohim, these are the sons of Elohim. As Yahuwah said earlier, we must be born of his seed so that we can be sons of Elohim. Through the Ruach of adoption. Through the Ruach of adoption. Matter of fact, let me really let's read one more verse down because that's exactly what it says. I should have put um, 1 through 15. All right, we're going to read 15 also. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. It is the Ruach of adoption. When the Ruach comes upon us, we, we are adopted of him as his sons and daughters, and we are now born of his seed, and we are now his. And we have now been given the power to walk in the mind of the Ruach, and we have now been given the power to walk in righteousness and truth, all right? In righteousness and truth. Because in John chapter 4, 20 through 20, through 22 through 24, John chapter 4, verses 22 through 24, he says, Yahushua says, you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know because deliverance, because the deliverance, the salvation is of the Yahudim. 
but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father also does seek such to worship him. Elohim is Ruach, is spirit, and those who worship him need to worship in spirit and in truth. All right. He commands us to worship him in Ruach and in truth. And worship does not merely consist in just uh, worship is not merely just uh, praise. You know, worship is obedience, obedience. True worship is obedience. The true worship of Elohim is to obey, is to walk in righteousness, is to walk in righteousness. And these are those whom he seeks after. For those to work, who want to worship him and ruach in the truth. He does not care about those who boast in their flesh. You can boast in your flesh all day, but you're going to die. You're going to die because the judgment of death is over the flesh. And as long as you remain in this wicked flesh and are not born again and walk in the ruach, you are going to die. You are going to die. We must worship him. All Yehudi and Greek, Yehudi and nations. Whether Yehuda, Ephraim, or strangers, mankind, nations, whomever you are, we must be born again of the Ruach. We must receive the spirit of adoption and we must worship him in Ruach and in truth as all our righteous forefathers did. Adam worshipped him in spirit and in truth. Noah worshipped him in Ruach and in truth. Abraham, Iskak, and Yaakov worshipped him in Ruach and in truth. All the 12 sons worshipped him in Ruach and in truth. Joshua, Ruach and in truth. Daoud worshipped him in Ruach and in truth. All the righteous prophets worshipped him in Ruach and in truth. Yahukanan, the immersion, the immerser, worshipped him in Ruach and in truth. Uh, Yahusha HaMashiach and his taught ones were worshippers and servants in Ruach and in truth. And so likewise, we too must be born again of the spirit. We must be born again of the spirit and worship him and serve him in Ruach and in truth. In Ruach and in truth. It is through the spirit, all right? It is through the spirit that we enter into covenant with Yahuwah and become firstborn sons according to the spirit. And we become partakers of the same everlasting covenant and promises and inheritance. That was given to who? That was given to his son, Yashara. Yashara is his firstborn son. Read Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. Yashara is his firstborn. All right. He established an eternal covenant with Yashara. It is through the spirit that we are engrafted into the olive tree and become partakers of the covenant. This is mentioned in Romans 11. If you go read Romans 11, it, it speaks of the olive tree, the natural olive tree and the wild olive tree. All right. Go more into this. Um, pretty much in, in this covenant, you know, Yahuwah established an eternal covenant with Abraham and his seed. But this eternal covenant goes all the way, all the way back to the times to the times of Adam. It goes all the way back to the times of, of Adam because it was established with Adam himself. But we're not going to speak on that. The eternal covenant of creation. We're just going to uh, touch on, we're going to start with Abraham, okay? So Yahuwah established this eternal covenant with Abraham and his seed, all right? He established an eternal covenant, an everlasting covenant with Abraham and his seed, all right? This covenant was then renewed with Iskak, and it was then renewed with uh, Yaakov, with Yaakov, and through Yaakov came the 12 sons, and they later became the 12 tribes of Yashra. They went down to Egypt. Uh, they went down to Egypt and, and, and were redeemed from Egypt through the hands of his servant Masha, through the hands of his servant Masha, and Masha brought them to Mount Sinai, where he established the eternal covenant, where he renewed this same covenant with them, Given that Sinai, all right, he established this eternal covenant with them. Um, essentially, this covenant was renewed from firstborn to firstborn to firstborn. Um, again, uh, as I said earlier, what's it called? That this covenant was established with Adam, but was passed down from generations to generations of firstborns until it made it to Abraham. And again, it made it, to, it renewed with Iskak, and then again, it was renewed with Yaakov. 
all right, until it made it to uh, Yaakov and his seed forever, forever. They were brought to Mount Sinai in which the covenant was renewed with them. It was renewed with them at Mount Sinai. It was not a new covenant. It was the eternal covenant that was renewed with them, okay? Time went by, time went by, we know. We know the story after the 40 years they came into the land and Yahuwah, uh, Yahuwah began to uh, establish them more, began to um, establish them in their land. You know, we know that we know uh, then came the time of the sovereigns, the time of the sovereigns of Yahshua, the first sovereign was Sha Shaul. Then after Shaul was Daud, who was the only one that reigned as Yahuwah reigns. He was the only righteous king that reigned as Yahuwah reigns. And because of this, he established an eternal covenant with Daud that he will never lack a man to sit on his throne, that he will never lack a man to sit on his throne. And that he, he and that he established Yahuwah established his throne on earth through Daud forever. Okay. After Daud came his son Shaloma, or commonly known as Solomon. Solomon. All right. After the reign, you know, we know the story of Solomon. He fell. He fell. He fell through transgression. And after the reign of, of Solomon, the nation of Yahshua became two nations. Uh, the ten northern tribes and the in the southern tribe Yehuda, Yehuda, the the known as the reign, the kingdom of Yehuda, and the reign of Yashara, also known as Ephraim, also known as Ephraim. The na the nation of Yashara no longer was twelve tribes strong, but became two nations, two sticks, the stick of Yehuda, the stick of Ephraim. We know the stories if you read throughout the scriptures. Both the nations were rebellious. Both the nations were rebellious, hard-headed, stiff-necked sons. All right. Uh, but as it applies to Ephraim, if you read Jeremiah chapter 3, Jeremiah chapter 3, we see there that essentially pretty much Yahuwah divorced Ephraim from covenant. From covenant. He divorced Ephraim from covenant. From covenant for uh he divorced Ephraim from the eternal covenant. And with Yehuda, he merely put Yehuda away. He did not divorce Yehuda, but he merely put them away. So Yehuda was still his wife. But we see both nations, even Yehuda in their put away status and in Ephraim, who was completely cut off from covenant, um, they both rebelled. They both rebelled. They both rebelled. They kept rebelling, you know, they kept rebelling against their husband, Yahuwah. And so all that, this applies to Romans 11. This applies to Romans 11. The natural olive tree is Yehuda. The natural olive tree is Yehuda. The wild olive tree is Aphraim. You know, in Romans chapter 11, it speaks of the wild olive tree uh, taken out and engrafted that is against nature and engrafted into the natural olive tree. This is Aphraim. And this is also by extension nations, the nations and Gentiles who would is uh, engraft, who would uh, who sojourn amongst us, who would desire to engraft too. But no more. Nevertheless, it's Ephraim. The wild olive tree is Ephraim. The natural is Yehuda, because Yehuda was never cut off from covenant. Yehuda was never cut off from covenant. Yehusha came uh, to Yehuda. And renew the eternal covenant with Yehuda, so that Yehuda can bring this this good news to Aphraim. That Aphraim, now you can come, you can come into covenant with the Father. You can now come back into covenant, but you will become, uh, for the meanwhile, for the meanwhile, you will engraft into the natural olive tree, which again is Yehuda, and you will be Yehuda in this for the meanwhile, until until the two sticks become one. We're not going to talk about that today. But what's it called? Uh, the natural olive tree is Yehuda. The wild olive tree is Aphraim. All right. And it's Romans 11 speaks of both the, 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 the natural and the wild olive tree. The natural and wild olive tree. Uh, Yehuda, you can be re-engrafted. You can be re-engrafted into, into your natural olive tree. When it speaks to being re-engrafted, it speaks to Yahuda because Yahuda is the natural olive tree. 
Yahuda is the natural olive tree, and you too can be re-engrafted. But you, but you were put away. Now, if you know the story, if you know of Yehuda, it says that Yehuda was more treacherous than than her sister Aphraim. You committed more harms than Aphraim. It says you were more treacherous than your sister Aphraim. But you were in a put away status. You were merely in a put away status, and you were therefore, uh, 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 um, what's it called? You were therefore still his bride, and therefore this was adultery. In the Torah, what does the adultery call? What is the judgment for one who commits adultery? Death. Yahuda, there is no way. As long as you are still in your flesh, as long as you are still in your flesh, uh, there is no way for you to be re-engrafted in accordance with the Torah. Because in accordance with Torah, you must die. The just, You must die, Yehuda, because you have transgressed Torah. You were not some. You were not subject to your bride, to your husband. Excuse me. You were not subject to your husband, Yahuwah. You committed much harm, and you rebelled against your husband. The judgment of death is upon you. You must die because you committed adultery. And so, the good news to you, Yahuda, is that the that the what's it called that your our husband Yahuwah came, put on flesh, and walked in, and took upon the sins of his bride. The sins of his bride in, in the sins of his bride And he was put to death Because the Torah rule, the Torah only rules over a woman As long as the husband is alive Alright But what if the husband comes And is put to death And is renewed Is raised to life as a renewed man Alright You can now enter into covenant With this renewed man Because again when we are immersed in Mashiach, we are immersed into his death. And so we also die with him. And so our husband came, took our crimes upon himself. Took our crimes upon himself. All right. He took our crimes upon himself so that we too can be put to death with him and be raised to life as a renewed bride in a renewed marriage covenant. This is the good news to Yahuda. You can come back into, you can be re-engrafted Yahuda. Through the offering of Yahushua HaMashiach, through your renewed husband, Yahushua HaMashiach. Aphraim, the good news to you is that uh, although in accordance with the Torah, Yahuwah divorced you, he divorced you, he divorced you, Aphraim. And you attach yourself to many other husbands and in accordance with the Torah, there is no way for you to come back into covenant. But the good news is that you can come back into covenant with your original husband. Because your, the original husband, what? Was also put to death, Aphraim. He was put to death for you so that he can be raised to life as a renewed man. And so now you too, Aphraim, when you're immersed into his death, you can be immersed into his death and die and be raised to life as a renewed bride. And you can be engrafted in, Aphraim. You can be engrafted in, Aphraim, through the offering of Yahushua. This is the good news. You can come back. In accordance with the Torah, there's no way for you to come back. But through the good news, of, uh, through the offering of Yahushua HaMashiach, you can come back. You can be engrafted in to the natural olive tree, Yahuda, and to the nations, mankind. Because uh, regardless, uh, um, this is all about the redemption of mankind. This is all about the salvation of mankind. Because through through his chosen people, Yashara, he chose Yashara to be a light to the nations, so that the remnant of mankind, the remnant of mankind, the seventy nations can be reconciled back into covenant with him. The good news, nations, you too can come into covenant with Yahuwah if you throw down your idols, you repent, come back into the bonds of covenant. And receive the offering of Yahushua through whom we see reconciliation. And you can be engrafted into the olive tree as well, nations. Because this is all about the redemption of mankind. Do not listen to those false Hebrew teachers. This is all about the redemption of mankind. You two nations can come and engraft if you repent. If you receive the offering of Yahushua Mashiach. If you receive his offering and you engraft into covenant with him and you become his, you can be like uh, Ruth, who was not of the seed of Yashara, 
the seed of Yashara, Cornelius, who was not the seed of Yashara. I forgot the harlot's name, Rahab. Rahab the harlot, who was not of the seed of Yashara, who was not of the seed of Yashara. All examples and shadows of the nations, the redemption of the nations coming into covenant with Yahuwah because this is all about the reconciliation of mankind. Because we are all, we are all come from Adam. We are all mankind. We all, this judgment of death must be paid in us all. We are all mankind. We are all Adam. We are all sons of Adam. And so the good news is we can all come into covenant through the offering of Yahushua HaMashiach in which he renewed the eternal covenant with his blood. We just, we, we, we must come back into covenant via the Ruach. And when the Ruach comes upon us, when the Ruach comes upon us, we become partakers of the same everlasting covenant promises and inheritance that was given only to Yashara, who represents mankind. Yashara is the representation of mankind because again, through Yashara, he is reconciling mankind back into covenant with him. Barak Yahuwah. <laughs> Barak Yahuwah. Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33, and we're going to read 31 through 34. Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33, and we're going to read 31 through 34. Jeremiah chapter 33, we're going to read verses 31 through 34. Is it 33 or 34? Excuse me, y'all. I said Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah 31. That's my fault, y'all. Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. Starting at ver uh, verse 31. See, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when I shall make a renewed covenant with the house of Yashara and with the house of Yahuda. All right, this is why Yahusha came. He's reconciling both the stick of Yahuda and Aphraim to bring them back to become one stick. If we read Ezekiel 37, I believe, Ezekiel 37, it reads of the two sticks. It, it, it re, it, we, we read about the first resurrection, the resurrection and not in, that he's bringing and that after the resurrection, he's going to bring the two sticks of Yahuda and Aphraim back into one into one nation again, to one nation again. And so this began the renewal of this covenant began at the offering of Yahushua. It has not been fully renewed, but it is being renewed. And it won't be fully renewed until the two sticks become one. This prophecy is being played out right now. As we speak, both Yahuda and Aphraim are coming back to become one. Right now, Yahuda bears the covenant, bears the covenant for, for right now. Yahuda is the bear, they, we bear the covenant. Yahuda, we bear the covenant because he never separated uh, Yehuda from covenant because of the promises that he made with Sovereign Dawood and because uh, that he had to come through, he had to come through Yehuda. All right, and so Yehuda bears the covenant right now. And so Aphraim, when you engraft, you become of Yehuda. You are Yahudim. You are now of the Yahudim. But a day is coming. The days are coming when he's going to renew the covenant both with Yehuda and Aphraim fully, fully. All right, fully at the first resurrection when he brings back both, when he brings the stick of Aphraim and the stick of Yahuda to become one again, to become one, one nation again. All right, this will begin at the beginning of the millennial reign. And so this, this renewing of the covenant uh, began when the offering of Yahushua was made so that he can bring back the two to become one, tearing down the barrier so that they can become one, one people again. And this is beginning, this is being played out as we speak. This prophecy is being played out right now. It won't be fully, it will not be fully fulfilled until, um, until the first resurrection. When the Mashiach comes back and the first resurrection takes place. And he brings both the stick of Yahuda and Aphraim back into covenant with him. Alright. 
Not like the covenant I made with their fathers in the day when I strengthened their hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them. For this is the covenant I shall make with the house of Yahshua all after those days, declaring Yahuwah, declares Yahuwah. I shall put my Torah in their inward parts and shall write it on their hearts, and I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And no longer will they teach each and then no longer will they teach each one his neighbor and each one his brother, saying, No Yahuwah, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, declares Yahuwah. For I shall forgive their crookedness and remember their sin no more. Alright, so the promises of this renewed covenant is that he was going to put his Torah within our hearts, that he was going to put uh that he was gonna put his Torah in our inward parts and that he was going to write them in our hearts all right this covenant again the renewal of this covenant uh the, the this promise of the renewed covenant came uh at the offering of yahushua hamashiach all right this began this is where this prophecy begins he's renewing the covenant he's renewing the covenant all right and he's writing the covenant upon our hearts upon our hearts Upon the not upon the tablets of stone that was given on the mountain of on Sinai, but upon the tablets of our hearts. All right, because again, it's via the flesh is unable to subject itself to the Torah, but it's only via the ruach that one is given the power. It is only through the ruach when the when he come the ruach comes into us. Yahuwah is answering us and establishes his covenant with us. He renews the covenant with us, and he writes the Torah. The Torah upon our hearts, and He gives us the power to walk in obedience to the Torah. Rock Yahuwah. Second Corinthians, and we're gonna read chapter three, one through six. Second Corinthians, chapter three, and we're gonna read one through six. One through six, starting at verse one. Are we to begin to recommend ourselves again, or do we need as some letters of recommendations to you or from you? You are our letter, having been written on our hearts, known and read by all men, making it obvious that you are a letter of Mashiach, served by us, written not with ink, but by the spirit of the living Elohim, not on the tablets of stone, but on the on fleshly tablets of the heart. And such trust we have toward Elohim through Mashiach, that we are not competent in ourselves to reckon any matter as from ourselves, but our competence is from Elohim, who made us competent as servants of a renewed covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. The spirit gives life. We are the servants of a renewed covenant. All right, as servants of a renewed covenant, a covenant not given on tablets of stone, but given, as but given upon the tablets of our heart, all right? The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. If all you do is fulfill the letter of the Torah, indeed, we still must walk in the letter. We still must obey the letter. But if all you do is obey the letter and never receive the Ruach, never receive the spirit, because indeed it's possible. Many in these sitting this season are walking according to the letter of the Torah, but they reject the spirit. Nicodemus was an example. He spoke to a Yahudim telling a teacher of the law, who guarded the Torah, but he was not un who was not able to understand uh, 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 that the Torah that the Torah pointed towards him. In the words of the Mashiach, he said, "You search the Scriptures because in them you think they contain life, not knowing that the the Scriptures that they speak of me, me Mashiach, the Ruach, the the Scriptures point to point to Mashiach. It points to the Ruach. If you can see, all right." And so, if all you do is fulfill the letter of the law, but, the, 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 but if the Ruach does not come to dwell in you, you are going to die. You are going to die. We must be born again. The Ruach must be come into us to establish and to renew the covenant with us, in which he writes the Torah upon the, the, the tablets of our hearts. And he gives us the power to subject ourselves in obedience to his Torah. Romans chapter 2, Romans chapter 2, and we're going to read uh, 28 through 29. Romans chapter 2, verse 28 through 29, starting at verse 28. For he is not a Yehudi who is so outwardly, neither is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But a Yehudi is he who is so inwardly, 
and circumcision is that of the heart in spirit, not literally, whose praise is not from men, but from Elohim. Again, Yahudi, again, because why does he speak as in the sense of Yahudi, Yahuda? Because again, Yahuda, we bear the covenant. We bear the covenant, Yahuda. Salvation is of the Yahudim. Salvation is of the Yahudim. And Yahuda bears the covenant. And so all in this season who come into covenant with Yahuwah, we are Yahudim. We are Yahuda. All right. And we see that true Yahudi is not one outwardly, neither is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But a Yahudi is he who is so out inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart and spirit, not literally, whose praise is not from men, but from Elohim. And so we see again the circumcision would work, the circumcision of the heart, which works along with the Torah being written upon our hearts. This is all he's dealing with our hearts. So when the Ruach comes upon us, when the Ruach comes upon us, he, and he, he reconciles us into covenant. He writes his Torah upon our heart, which is what the circumcision of the heart also. He writes the Torah upon our heart and by extension, he gives us the sign of the eternal covenant, which is the, the circumcision, the circumcision. Now, Yahuwah made a video through me a couple weeks ago about the circumcision that in, this, in the renewal of this covenant, we no longer uh, are required to, as adults, if you're a grown man, if you come to Mashiach, if you are called in uncircumcision, let you are not to be you you do not have to be circumcised if you are called an uncircumcision you do not have to be circumcised if you come as one circumcised you do not have to become uncircumcised but the guarding of the commands does matter the guarding of the torah in spirit and in truth the true worshiper shall worship him in spirit and in truth all right the torah being written upon your heart you becoming a renewed creature this is what matters this is what matters. So you do not have to be circumcised in your flesh. The only circumcision that is not required, that is not only needed, that has always been needed, but in the renewal of this covenant, after, as the offering of Yahushua has been made, the only circumcision that is now needed is that of the heart. Is that of the heart. He has to deal with our hearts. Are the Torahs not the problems? We, our wicked hearts is the problems. And so we must, when we come into covenant, we must receive the circumcision of the heart, which is the sign of the eternal covenant. Because it's through the circumcision that he cleanses our wicked hearts. It's through the circumcision that he cleanses our hearts. Because it's from the heart, it's from the heart that all wicked reasonings comes forth. All adulteries and theft and, and slanderings and hatred and lust come from our wicked heart. So he has to come into us and perform a surgery on our heart. He has to come to remove the foreskin of our heart. He has to come and circumcise our wicked heart, and he has to come into us to write the Torah upon our heart so that we can be so that we can be sons of the eternal covenant, not of letter, not of not of flesh, not a letter, uh, 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 but via the Ruach, via the Ruach. Does that make sense? It is through the Ruach that we receive the sign of the eternal covenant via the Spirit when He comes into us. This is why we must be born again to become sons of Elohim. Because those who have the Spirit of Elohim, these are the sons. But those who do not have the Spirit, these are not His. You are not in covenant with Him. Alright? You are not in covenant with Him. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, we're going to read... And we are going to read 11 through 15. Colossians chapter 2. And we're going to read uh, verses 11 through 15. In him. In who? In Yahushua HaMashiach. In the Ruach. You were also circumcised. With a circumcision not made with hands. In the putting off of the body of the sins of flesh. By the circumcision of the of Messiah. <laughs> Having been buried with him in the immersion, in which you were also raised with him through belief in the working of Elohim, who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of, of your flesh, he made him he made a life together with him, having forgotten 
you all trespass, having forgiven you all trespasses, having blotted out that which was written against us by the dogmas, by the dogmas which stood against us and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the stake, having stripped the principalities and the authorities, he made a public display of them, having prevailed over them in it. All right, so again, we see that in Mashiach we were circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands in the putting off of the body of the sin of flesh. All right. And that by extension too, this all mentioned in the same, the immersion of the Ruach, the immersion of the Ruach. We are we were buried with him and we are put to death in immersion, the immersion of the Ruach, in which you were also raised with him through belief in the working of Elohim who raised him from the dead. The same Ruach that raised Yahushua from the dead gave life to our mortal bodies and raised us from the dead. Raised us from the dead. And we were being we were dead in our trespasses and because of this uncircumcision of our wicked flesh, he made us alive together, having forgiven us all trespasses. In the renewal of the covenant, when he comes, when the Ruach comes upon us, this is the seal of redemption make an atonement for us. This is the, the seal of redemption coming to make atonement for us, the Ruach. There is no atonement for you if the Ruach has not come upon you. The Ruach is the seal of redemption. It is the seal, we, it is the sign and the seal that we have been sealed for the day of redemption. And so it is the Ruach that comes upon us that makes atonement for us, that reconciles us back into covenant. As he enters us and establishes us a covenant with us. As a man and woman come together, they, a covenant is established with them when they become one flesh. Likewise, the Father sends his spirit into our hearts and establishes this covenant with us. We are put to death, satisfying, we are put to death in the flesh, satisfying the righteous requirement of the Torah on account of sin, which is death, and is paid in us through belief in him and we are made alive through the Ruach, through the resurrection and the righteousness of, of, of Mashiach. We were put to, he was put to death on account of our sins and he was made he was raised to life for us to be declared right. And so when through his, and so now through his resurrection, we are declared righteous and we are reconciled back into covenant. He by extension circumcises our hearts, our wicked hearts and gives us the sign of the covenant, which is the circumcision of the heart. And again, by extension, he also writes the Torah upon our hearts via the spirit in a renewed covenant, in a renewed marriage covenant with our father, with our husband, who is Yahuwah. All right? In a renewed marriage covenant. John chapter 15, and we're going to read just verses 1 through 5. John chapter 15. John chapter 15, and we're going to read just verses 1 through 5, starting at verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. I am the true vine. What is this? What, who is speaking? Yahusha. Who is what? Who is the Ruach? Yahusha is Ruach. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that he bears more fruit. We are these trees, we, we are these branches, excuse me, we are these branches. Yahusha, who is the Ruach, is the vine. He is the true vine. He is the Ruach, and we are the branches when we're born again. We are these branches attached to the tree of life, attached to the olive tree. It's all synonymous. John 15, Romans 11, it's all synonymous with each other. We are engrafted into the olive tree. We are engrafted into the, to, the, to this vine, the true vine, and what's expected of, of us to bear fruit, all right? But we can't bear fruit without the Ruach, as we're going to read. We're going to read right now. We can bear no fruit outside of him. Verse 3, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Stay in me. Stay in the Ruach. Stay in me, and I stay in you. My Ruach will stay in you as the branch is unable to bear fruit of its of itself unless it stays in the vine so neither you unless you stay in me unless we stay in him in the ruach we are unable to bear fruit all right i am the vine <clears throat> you are the branches 
He who stays in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. Because without me, you are unable to do not. Again, it matters not whether you're Yahuda or Ephraim. Yahuda or Ephraim. Without him, we are unable to do nothing. Without the Ruach, without Mashiach, we are unable to do nothing. We can bear no fruit. What fruit do you think he's the, he is speaking of? The fruit of obedience to the Torah in Ruach and in truth. Walking in the spirit. Walking in obedience. Producing the fruit of righteousness. Which we cannot do in our wicked flesh. Jeremiah 31. And he get the covenant which, he, which, which we disobeyed. Which we did not obey. Why did they? Why did the people? Why did the forefathers not obey the Torah? Because they were in their flesh. This is why, again, we must be born again and engrafted into the tree of life, engrafted into the olive tree, engrafted into the true vine, Yahusha Hamashiach, so that through Him, through Him, we can bear fruit. Without Him, we can do nothing. Without the Torah being written upon our heart, we are unable to obey Torah. Without the circumcision of the, of the heart, we are not going to be able to put off this body of death. We must put off this body of death and we must put on the Ruach, the garment of righteousness, the garment of life, which is Yahushua Mashiach, as we are born again of the Spirit. Because without the Ruach, without the garment of righteousness, we cannot do anything. We have no righteousness of our own. The righteousness of Yahuwah covers us when we're born again of the Ruach. His righteousness covers us. It is His righteousness that dwells within us. There is nothing good in us. It is His goodness, His righteousness that dwells in us and works in us and through us. It is His righteousness that covers us. So it, He is the Ruach. He is the Spirit. And without Him, we can do nothing. We cannot obey Torah. We can obey the letter in our flesh. But where the letter is, where the flesh is, where the flesh is, my bad, where the flesh is, uh, 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 um, you're going to die. If all that you keep is the letter in your flesh, you're still going to die. If all you do is acknowledge that you are the seed of Yahshua, you are going to die. We must be born again of the Ruach, of the true vine. We must be engrafted into the olive tree, which is the tree of life, which is Mashiach Yahusha, because only through him can we subject and obey, subject ourselves to the Torah and obey him. Rock Yahuwah. Galatians chapter, I believe Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to read verses 19 through 20. Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to read 19 through 25. 19 through 25, starting at verse 19. Give me one second, y'all. Galatians chapter 15, 19 through 25. Galatians chapter... Galatians chapter 5, my bad. Galatians chapter 5, 19 through 25, starting at verse 19. But the works and the works of the flesh are well known, which are these adultery, whoring, uncleanness, indecency, idolatry, drug sorcery, hatred, quarrels, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envies. Murders, drunkenness, wild parties, and the like of which I forewarn you, even as I said before, that those who practice such as these shall not inherit the reign of Elohim. If you are in your flesh, no doubt you are walking in this fruit. There is no doubt that you are walking in this fruit. The flesh, no flesh will inherit the reign of Elohim. And all who practice such as these, that of the flesh, the fruit, the works of the flesh, you will not inherit the reign of Elohim. So it matters not again. It matters not if you are if we are all sold under sin. In the Torah, our ancestors proved that because of they were in their flesh, they were unable to keep the Torah. So to any who may be boasting in your flesh and, pre and preaching that as the good news, that we are the true people, 
but not preaching the Ruach, the renewal and the regeneration to be, be born again of the Ruach. Why do you boast in your flesh? Why do you preach this is the good news? We're not even Shaul in them. We, we do not rely on our flesh. We are circumcision serving. We are those of the circumcision serving Mashiach. But we are, we are serving him in the Ruach. Our boast is in the Ruach. Our boast is in the spirit. All right. All who practice such as these will not inherit the reign of Elohim. All right. All who walk in the flesh will not inherit the reign of Elohim. Sin rules over the flesh. Sin rules over the flesh. Hashatan rules over the flesh. And this is all the fruit of his children as we read. This is all the fruit of his children. But let's see the fruit of the children of Elohim. The fruit of the children of Elohim. Twenty-two. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trustworthiness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no Torah. Against such there is no condemnation. In Romans chapter 8 says there is now no condemnation to those who are in Mashiach, Yahushua, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. There is condemnation upon those who walk in the fruit, in the works of the flesh that we read above. But those who walk in the fruit of the Ruach, there is no condemnation. There is no Torah of condemnation. There is no Torah that condemns this behavior. If you walk in the spirit, if you walk in the fruit of righteousness, there is no condemnation upon you. The wages of sin is death. But if you have been born again, you have been put to death. You have been put to death in the flesh and the deeds of the body are being put to death in you as you walk in the spirit, as you walk in righteousness. All right. And so there is no condemnation to those who walk in the fruit of the Ruach. This is the demon. This is what um, this is the proof and the demonstration. This fruit that we see here is the proof. That one bear has the Ruach of Yahuwah. That one shows that they have the circumcision of the heart. And that the Torah has been written upon the heart. This that we read. Love. Torah is love. Is it not? The greatest two commands is to love Yahuwah with all your heart, mind, and strength. And to love your neighbor. The one and the other one is like unto it. And that is to love your neighbor as yourself. We see peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness trustworthiness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no Torah. All this is the fruit of the Ruach, the fruit of one who is in covenant with Yahuwah. All right, it is the fruit of one who is in covenant with Yahuwah. By their fruit you shall know them, says Yahusha. By their fruit you shall know them. 24, and those who are of Messiah have impelled the flesh with its passions and the desires. And if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. This is the proof of one who is in the spirit, who shows this kind of fruit. This is all the fruit of the Ruach. This only, this, all of this that we read, this fruit can only be kept in the Ruach. All right? Can only be kept in the Ruach. And again, uh, this is all the weightier matters of the Torah. One cannot guard the weightier matters of the Torah if they're in their flesh. Indeed, you can guard the letter of the Torah, but you cannot guard the weightier matters of the Torah, which all this is. This is all the weightier matters of the Torah. All right. This is why the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. The spirit gives life because if all you do is fulfill the letter and if all you do is make the declaration that you are of the true seed, but you do not show this kind of fruit that we read here, what does it profit? Am I saying that we are not to guard the letter? No, we must guard. We must not. We must not look past one jot or one tittle of the law until all be fulfilled. We must guard even the smallest portion of the Torah, all His commandments. But if all you do is fulfill the letter of the law and do not walk in the weightier matters of the law, which all this is in Galatians, but this is all the weightier matters of the Torah. 
And if, if, if unless you walk in that fruit, what does it profit? You know, what does it profit? If you are in your flesh, and, and you do not, if you are of the seed of Yashara, but you do not walk in this fruit, what does it profit? What does it profit? You know, we must walk in the spirit. This is the demonstration of one who walks in the spirit. All this was Yahusha. Yahusha walked in all of this fruit. All of this was Yahusha. We must, all of us must walk in the spirit. We must not give in to the flesh. All of us, we must be born again of the spirit and we must die to this wicked flesh. We must die to this wicked flesh. We must die to this wicked flesh. And so the message, the message that the, the, the taught ones proclaimed, the, te the message that the taught ones proclaimed, this is the message that we must all be proclaiming in this season. This is Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And Kafa said to them, repent, repent. Come back to Torah. Repentance means to come back to Torah. Come back to Torah and uh, uh, um, come back to the light of instruction. Turn from your wickedness, turn from your sins, and come back to the doing of righteousness. Come back into obedience to the Torah. And let each one of you be immersed in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach for the forgiveness of sins. Because the immersion, the physical water immersion is given for us, what? For the remission of sins. It is a sin offering taking place. And so when we go in that water, as we read in Romans chapter 6, we die with him. We are buried with him and we are raised to life to the newness of life with him by belief. By belief, we are raised to life into the newness of life by belief. In the uh, By belief. And the judgment of death is paid in us. Through belief in him. The judgment of sin which is death is paid in us through belief in him. All righteousness must, must be fulfilled. And the words of Yahushua should permit it, permit it now so that all righteousness be, for, be fulfilled. All righteousness be fulfilled. The righteousness the, of, the, of the judgment of death that was pronounced of... Excuse me, y'all. The righteous requirement of the Torah, which is death on account of sin death on account of sin that very death that came in through the sin of the diamond cord this judgment of death being paid in us through belief in him this is where we must this is why we must be immersed in the name of Yahusha in physical water anyone who says you don't have to be immersed is a liar and the truth is not in them you must be immersed in physical water in the name in the one true name the one name, Yahusha HaMashiach, not JC, not Yahweh not Shai, not, uh, not any other false names. The only name, and that is Yahusha HaMashiach. You must be immersed in the name of Yahusha for the forgiveness of your sins. And he says, you shall receive the gift of the set-apart spirit. You shall. He, don't say, he does not say you might, you could, you possibly might. He says, you shall receive the gift of the set apart spirit. Why? Because if you go into that, you when you go into that water, you must go with the right heart. Or you must go with the right heart. You must go with the right heart. You must go with the right belief. You must go as a humble child with the right humility into that water. And you must be desperate. You must be desperate because he says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. For they shall be filled. And so, unless you go into the water with the right heart in the right state, you will not receive the gift of the, of the Ruach. Because if all you do, if all you do is receive a physical water immersion, but do not receive the immersion of the Ruach, which we must all receive, all you did was get wet. All you did was get wet. Uh, you just went in dry and came out. You just went, came in uh, 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 dry and you just came out wet. You just came out wet. So you must go with the right heart. You must go with the right heart, the right hunger, the right desperation, the right thirst, the right humility, the right belief. Because if you read throughout the Basaurus, all the people that he helped, that he healed, 
that he that he showed compassion to. We see the same characteristics. They showed humility. They were desperate and they had great belief. And what happened? He sent forth deliverance. And likewise, when you go into that water, you must go with these right, the right characteristics, with the right kind of soil, so that he can send the seed to be planted in your heart. You must go to the right in the to that water the right way. Because likewise, there's only do you there's only two types of offerings that we can bring him. Either you're gonna bring him the offering of Cain or the offering of Abel. The offering of Cain or the offering of Abel. Because when you go into that water, you're presenting yourself as an offering. Understand? When you go into that water, you're presenting yourself as an offering. As an offering. And there's only two types of offerings in this age. Either you're the offering of Cain or you're the offering of Abel. All right, and we see that Yahuwah accepted Abel because he was righteous, he had a pure heart. He had a pure heart and he rejected the offering of Cain. So when you go into the water, that's the only two outcomes. Either he sees you as Cain and rejects your offering or he shows you as, uh, as Abel, as Abel, and he sees that you have a pure heart and that you love him with all your heart, mind, and strength. That you love him with all your heart, mind, and strength. That you love him with all your heart, mind, and strength. And he's going to show that he approves of your offering by him sending down fire from heaven. He's going to send down the consuming fire of his Ruach into your heart. And he's going to show that he has accepted you by him sending you the Ruach into your hearts. Can you see it? Can you see that he's going to send down the Ruach if you go with the right heart, with the right kind of offering? Giving up all for him because he says, unless you give up all, you shall buy you are you are not worthy of me. Unless you give up all, you are not worthy of me. So we must be going into that water, giving it all up, being willing to give up our lives in this age for him. You must go in the water the right way so that he can accept you. This is so important because many people get immersed in physical water, but they they they, they come out. Uh, still dead, still dead because the Ruach did not come. And so we have to understand that we must go into that water the right way. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Have you humbled yourself? Do you have true belief that he will forgive you, that he will rain down, that he will send down fire from Shamaim? Because you are desperate. You are crying out from the land of Egypt and he's going to send forth deliverance the Ruach HaKadosh, the seal of redemption, the anointing, the oil from above, the living water, the renewed wine, the bread from Shamaim. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Are you desperate for this water? Because he says those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. In the same way he says you shall receive the gift of the set apart spirit. You shall receive. This is the goal that we be born again that we receive the Ruach in this age. So that when he seals you, so he seals, he gives you the power to guard the Torah. He writes the Torah upon your heart. And by extension, he circumcises your heart and gives you the sign of the eternal covenant. And now he gives you the power to bear the fruit of righteousness that leads to everlasting life. And you know, and then we're not Christians. We do not declare, once we receive the Ruach, we are not saved. We are not Christians as they say we are saved. No, when the Ruach comes upon you, you have now been given a hope and an expectation. And now we must run this race with endurance. We must overcome and endure unto the end and possess our lives by our endurance. And we must be deemed worthy of the reign of Elohim. We are not Christians. This is not a Christian message. We must endure. And this is why he gives you the Ruach because the sufferings of this age, they will come. But in the words of Shaul, as encouraging the body, encouraging the body, he says, the sufferings of this age are not worthy to be compared to the esteem that shall be revealed in us. And so let us be encouraged because he has given us his spirit so that we can endure the trials and tribulations that will come because a servant is not above his master. A servant is not above his master. Yahusha suffered greatly. 
in, in this life. We too are going to suffer greatly in this age. Through much suffering and affliction, we, we must enter the reign of Elohim. But through this suffering, he is pruning us. He is seeing if we are worthy and if we will hold on like Yaakov all night so that he can barack us until the break of day, until the break of day, until salvation comes. We are awaiting our deliverance, you know. We too must endure and work out our salvation. We must work out our salvation. And unless we become obedient unto death, as Mashiach was, we will not be saved. We must be obedient unto death, producing the fruit of righteousness, overcoming, enduring unto the end, so that we too can be deemed worthy and be exalted. Because those who humble themselves in this life will be exalted. But those who exalt themselves now shall be humbled. Shall be humbled. So we must humble ourselves in this age, in this life now. And we must be born again in this age now. And we must endure as Mashiach became obedient unto death. We too must have this mind in us. That we humble ourselves and become servants and endure unto the end so that we can be saved. So that we can be saved because indeed we have a hope and an expectation. The world, the nations have no hope and expectation. They have no hope and expectation. But to us who is of the seed of Yashara, the seed of Yaakov, not the physical seed, but those born of from above, those who are the sons of Elohim, who have been born of the ages to come, we have been given a hope and an, ex and, and an expectation of everlasting life. And a hope and an expectation of deliverance. And we must all be found worthy. We must all be found worthy of, of deliverance, of salvation, so that we can be saved. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. I pray that this message was uh, edifying. I pray that it was encouraging. I pray that it, 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 it just... It laid a good foundation in us all or relayed a foundation because again, whether you know this or not, it matters not. We are always learning and it never hurts to um, and it never hurts to um, get a refresher and things so that we can understand the importance of why we must be born again. We must be born again. We must be born again of the spirit. We must be born again. We must receive the Ruach. We must receive the anointing. We must. Because without him, we can do nothing. Okay? Um, and again, I just pray it was edifying, encouraging, uplifting for us all. Um, and I just pray nothing but the favor, the blessings, and the shalom, the peace of Yahuwah upon you all this day in your houses, over your families, this day and forevermore. Shalom Yahushua. Shalom, shalom.